folks. It's late as I record this on Thursday, April 25th. And the news from the first round of the NFL draft as it relates to Iowa, the news is that there is no news to report. Iowa defensive back Cooper DeGene snubbed in the first round of the draft. A shocker to a lot of people. He was projected firmly in that first round, albeit in the last third of most mock drafts. We'll talk about it in just a second. He will hear his name called early on Friday during the second round of the NFL draft. But first, I want to remind everybody, if you've not done so, go ahead and hit the like button. Please subscribe to the channel. It does help us in the algorithm, helps the channel to grow the platform here, trying to provide the most Hawkeye coverage possible here on YouTube. And also, you can listen to all of our long-form content over on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you listen to your podcasts from the Hawkeye of the Storm on your favorite podcast platforms. Again, thank you for giving the show a like and a five-star rating on Spotify and Apple. So the news, as I mentioned, Iowa DB Cooper DeGene, former Iowa DB Cooper DeGene, an RTI Threads athlete. RTI Threads, a big part of our show. Randy Ingalls got to partnership with Cooper. This young man is just from great roots. He comes from Odebolt, Iowa, and put on a show during his time with the Hawkeyes. Of course, ended his career uh, not playing because of an injury, a lower leg injury during his final year. Had the option of returning for one more season with the Hawkeyes. Ended up entering the draft. Was projected after getting fully healthy and showing out at his pro day in Iowa City. Was projected to go late first round, somewhere between 18 and 30 in most mock drafts. It seemed like he was going to be the first DB taken in the first round. The first Iowa DB under Kirk Ferentz to be taken in the first round of the NFL draft, but it was not to be. Now, if you followed this throughout the evening over on ESPN, as I did, you are probably looking at a few different spots, and I am by no means Mel Kuyper Jr. or Todd McShay. I'm no draft expert, but some of the obvious fits. I thought Pittsburgh at 20. Traditionally, I think Cooper Jean would have fit that Mike Tomlin system well. Need-wise, I think You know, obviously, you look at pick 22, Philly took Quinion Mitchell, the Toledo corner, who uh, Nick Saban made some interesting remarks about over on ABC, I heard about (laughs) following that selection. And then certainly Detroit at 24, they took Terry on Arnold out of Alabama. Then we thought, hey, Green Bay is going to pick him up. That had kind of been the trendy pick with most mock drafts that I looked at earlier today. Green Bay really liked Cooper DeGene from what I heard, and uh, they ended up taking Offensive tackle Jordan Morgan out of Arizona. So then you start going down the list as we get towards the end of that first round. You have a center taken. You have an edge rusher, Xavier Worthy, the speedster out of uh, Austin taken by the Chiefs. Then I thought, hey, maybe uh, maybe the Cowboys are going to take a pick based on value. They end up going with Tyler Guyton out of Oklahoma, the big offensive tackle. And then you think, okay, if the Steelers didn't pick him up, their arch rival, the Baltimore Ravens, will pick him up <laughs> not to be Nate Wiggins. Uh, at a Clemson, the other top corner uh, available, according to Kuyper, was taken. And then uh, a couple other players, offensive players, wide receivers. It's a very wide receiver heavy first and second round draft class. And, of course, a bunch of quarterbacks taken early. So now we move to the second round on Friday. And, again, I am no expert as it relates to position needs. But you have the Buffalo Bills. You have a pretty veteran back end of that defense One guy that comes to mind, Micah Hyde, former Hawkeye. Maybe Cooper ends up playing with him. You've got the Patriots at 34, Cardinals at 35, Commanders at 36. Then you got Chargers, Titans, Panthers, and Commanders again. One would have to think he gets selected. I will say this, folks, again, without being a draft expert, and yes, I'm biased. I've got an Iowa shirt on right now. Telling you this right now, I've been watching Hawkeye football like my whole life. I have said this before, and I don't think I'm exaggerating. I believe that Cooper DeGene may be the best player that I've ever seen put on an Iowa uniform. And the idea that he's still available heading into the second round of the draft is incredible to me. And I will hop on the popular Homer train this evening that there are going to be a bunch of teams that regret not taking him. He's going to give you unbelievable versatility in the back end. He's going to give you incredible value on special teams. We'll see how teams try to utilize that talent. I could see him returning punts right out of the get-go like Charlie Jones did for Cincinnati. But I'm telling you, folks, this kid is really good, and I'm sure that injury hurt his draft stock. But he ran pretty well at the uh, pro day over in Iowa City here just a couple weeks ago. So 
uh, Cooper DeGene, uh, RTI Threads athlete and um, partner with our friend over in Mitchellville, Randy Engel of Under the Kitchen. He will, uh, Cooper DeGene will be selected early Friday, but snubbed on this Thursday of the first round of the 2024 NFL draft. So just wanted to give you guys an update on that, folks. If you weren't watching the draft, We'll be back with you tomorrow when we hear officially where Cooper's headed. Don't forget to like the video, folks. Tell your friends about what we're doing here. We'll talk to you on Friday.